In this video on C Sharp Basics, let's take a look at class constructors. So class constructors are methods which are ran when a class is instantiated. Now a class is instantiated when the new keyword is used and a class is assigned to an object. Parameters can be passed into the constructor when the new keyword is used and the class is instantiated. The code snippet shortcut for a class constructor is CTOR, and we will use that extensively throughout this demonstration. So here's the syntax of a class constructor. Let's assume we have a class called myClass. Inside the scope of this myClass class, we can define a public method of the same name as the class. So our public method is called myClass. Now inside the scope of this my class method, we can put in the code that we wish to perform. Let's take a look at an example of this. So here we are in our my class class object. And typically you want your class constructors to be after any sort of property definitions. So here are my properties. And after this, I'm going to go ahead and use the code snippet CTOR tab tab. And you'll see that it defines a new method called my class. Now by default, classes already have a class constructor. This default class constructor is created by the CLR at runtime. And the only way you override the default behavior of a class constructor is by defining your own class constructor. This in and of itself is not a particularly important point to remember. Just understand that if you want your classes to do something when your class is at first initialized, you're going to want to define that behavior inside of a class constructor. But let's say that you wanted to actually define your own values for value one and value two when the class was initially instantiated. So let's say that we want to assign value one the value of six, and then for value two, let's go ahead and assign it a value of four. So now the properties value one and value two will be assigned a value when the class is initially started. Let's go ahead and go back to the program class and let's see how to use this new version of the my class with a constructor. So I'm gonna go ahead and take and comment out the console write line and read line here. And I'm gonna uncomment back in the do math method that does not take any parameters. Notice that we are not passing any actual values to this my class class object or my object here, and we're not passing any values into the do math method. The only time that the class gets any sort of properties assigned to value one and value two would be here inside of this my class class constructor. I'm going to go ahead and save this, and I'll set a breakpoint here on the my object declaration. And let's go ahead and start and see where this goes for debugging. So our first stop here is at our breakpoint. And if we step into the next step, we'll see that we hop over to the my class class, where we see the class constructor here of my class. Now the values of six and four are assigned to the properties. And when we continue to step through, and now our do math method is called, we'll see that the value of value one is six and the value of value two is four. You can see that down here on the autos window or you can hover the mouse over each one of these properties. That is then passed into the add to integers method where once again, we can see the value one is six, value two is four. And the addition is performed here and assigned to the integer of sum. Then sum is returned back to the caller which is the write line, the console write line. So that will write out to the console window. And if we pull this up, we can see, sure enough, the value of six plus four is 10. And then of course the read line, which is waiting for us to have some sort of input here inside the console window. And if I hit enter, we exit the application. To demonstrate that the my class class constructor is not called until we use the new keyword to instantiate our class, I'm gonna go ahead and split up this declaration into two separate statements. So now my object is going to be assigned this new instance of my class after it is actually initially declared. And I'm gonna go ahead and set a breakpoint here on the actual main method here before 
the declaration of my object and the instantiation of the object. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. If we step into the code here and go to the next step, we'll see that we kind of skip over the declaration of the my object class, but you can see that it was in fact created in memory. Unfortunately, the C-sharp compiler does not actually allow you to stop at the declaration of an object, but that's okay. Next, we have the assignment of a new instance of the my class class to the my object object. And that is when the my class class constructor is called. Now we can see that the value of six and four are assigned to the properties. And now we can, of course, do the do math method and move through our add two integers, write line, read line. And here we are at our console window. Now, just like any other method, you can actually do an overload of a class constructor. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and declare using my CTOR code snippet, I'm going to declare another overloaded method of the class constructor. Now, right now, because I don't have any difference in signatures between this definition of the my class constructor and this definition of the my class constructor, I need to make something different about this particular one. And I'm gonna go ahead and allow the user to pass in a couple of values to set for the properties. So we'll go ahead and do int value one, int value two. I'm gonna go ahead and assign value one property, the value of value one. Then I'm gonna assign the value two property the value of value two. Naming convention comes into play here because the value one is lowercase and the value two is lowercase here for the parameters, which helps to differentiate it from the actual property names. However, if you did something like this, I just wanna show you with value one and value two as the names of your parameters, then there will be a little confusion by the C-sharp compiler and you can see this here by the green squiggly line that's underneath each one of these. And the way that you can differentiate between the property for value one here and value two versus the name of your parameters is just to put this in front of the actual property that you want to assign the value to. And this works just fine. Okay, so now that we have our new signature for this my class constructor, I'm gonna go ahead and utilize this to my benefit. I'm going to go ahead and pass into the declaration and the instantiation of this my class class object here. I'm going to go ahead and pass in the values of 8 and let's do 12. You can even see that while we're defining the values to pass into the parameters, we get our IntelliSense that tells us that the my class class constructor allows us to pass in value 1 and value 2. I'm gonna go ahead and save this, and let's go ahead and run it. So once again, we stop at our breakpoint that we have. I'm gonna go ahead and step through the code just so we can watch this. Here's the assignment of the new my class object to the my object. And we can see that it jumps to this version of the class constructor that accepts value one and value two as parameters. And now we're seeing the assignment of the values for value one and value two. And if I move past this and look down here in the autos, we can see value two is passed into value two. And inside the this, so there's value one is eight, value two is 12. And if we continue on through this and do the do math method, we can see that the value is instead 20 on our console window. I'd like to show you one more thing. I'm gonna go ahead and comment out this default my class constructor that doesn't take any parameters and save this. And now I'm gonna go back to my program. And if I just take these out, we'll see that there's actually a problem now with the declaration and instantiation. We don't have any arguments being passed in and the C-sharp compiler recognizes that there's a problem here. I'm attempting to instantiate a version of the class with a class constructor that doesn't exist. And that's because the only class constructor that we have requires a value one and a value two to be passed in as parameters. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass in a couple of values here and we'll see that this satisfies the compiler.